Alright, it is Wednesday today, and uh, as I'm recording this, and hopefully this will be a excellent next video for you to learn from the previous video on how, what to do with uh, some entity framework and things. So, uh, I'm working an MVC project here. I already have, if I take a look at my NuGet packages, uh, right-clicking on my project, uh, you can see I already have the entity framework installed. If you don't have that, go ahead and go online here to your new get packages. It's going to take a second to rifle up. Uh, and let's see, I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, and actually it came back pretty quick. Alright, so anyways, so the entity framework you can see right here is at the top. Uh, this would be the package that you want to install. I'm going to go ahead and install all the other packages that are necessary for this tutorial. So, uh, in any case, let's go ahead and uh, let's do something with our users view here. Um, get rid of this. If you remember from last time, we created a view and we created this table called users and a users view. And we have, uh, uh, I don't think we actually we made any stored procedures. Oh, we did. Yep which was to get user settings. Um, we're going to be using Entity Framework, and in the next tutorial I'm going to show a link to ask you all on how to use that with these stored procedures. So let's go ahead and uh, so let's say we get a username passed into here, and uh, we need to do something with it. Well, first of all, we need to uh, go ahead to our users content. I'm going to go over my users model and do a couple things here. So you can see we have this uh, class which represents a row within the users table here. And then we have a users view which represents a row in our users view. Uh, the entity framework works directly with tables and kind of handles the rest of the magic in the background to handle views and security and things like that. So in this case, we're not going to have to worry about selecting or not selecting directly from the table. So let's go ahead and manage that. And to do that, we're going to make a DB context, and essentially, it's uh, going to be pretty, I almost forgot, class, users, context, who inherits from system.data.entity, at DB, or uh, DB context. All right, so it's going to inherit from the DB context, and that what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to do a lot of uh, background magic as far as creating tables, updating or creating records, updating records, deleting records, and reading records, and that'll also give us a lot of flexibility to do uh, selects, select where's, and inserts, and um, where and things like that. So, and then we need to make a public field, uh, which will also inherit from the system entity framework, and this is actually going to be a database set. What's it a set of? Well, we're making a set of users, right? This is a collection of users. So imagine now that this will represent your table, and this uh, and this is holding a several rows of your users. And user. There we go. And I'm going to build my project here. Yeah, that's looking fine. Okay. Well, for some reason that's not showing up, but I will, uh, I'll fix that later in the set. So I think there's just something goofy running in the background. Anyways, uh, so now I'll do that. And one other thing we need to do really quick is we, uh, since we have an existing database here, um, I'm going to show you really quick how to configure the web config. If you're going to just be using this generically, uh, if you go into your app data, and uh, up here this says show all files. Uh, if you don't have a database already generated, it will generate a temporary one for you here. So in this case, we want to connect to this guy. So I'm going to make a connection string uh, field down in the bottom here. I'm going to say add uh, name, and I'm going to say entity connection. And now let's, uh, we have to give it the actual connection string. And the one way to go about that is you can uh, left click on your, or right click on your project here. And when the circle's done being silly, uh, you can go to properties. It'll pull up your properties window. And you can see mine is uh, right here. So I'm going to select all and copy. And uh, close my properties window out. I'm just going to paste it right in there. And we need to do a couple things now. So I'm going to move my connection string down here. 
So it's going to set the data source. Data source is fine. One thing you can do here now, though, uh, you need to get rid of that quote. I'm going to delete all the way up until just about our database here. And you can actually say uh, attach DB file name. You can say data directory like that and it'll actually know to look in your app data folder then so actually it'll just look in your app data folder and then there you go and then in, in for mine I've integrated security is equal to true yours might be false or SSPI or something completely different uh, that I've never seen before so so anyway so yeah this is all there is for your connection string and then last little bit we need to uh, we need to tell the entity framework to use this and to do that, you go system, or uh, you go provider name uh, is equal to, and you say system.data.entity, meaning that we want the entity framework to use this, and I think this is provider name. Uh, provider name is equal to system data entity. So now the entity framework will use this connection to connect to the database. And if I refresh this or whatever, these should all work still just fine. So, great. So now let's go ahead over to our users. We have our users context. Now let's start doing stuff with it. I'm going to close my web config out. Oh, I guess I should have showed you. Your web config, if you're working in an MVC project, actually, and even web forms as well, um, your web config file is in the... Uh, so here's your parent directory. If you open that, it's not listed in a folder anywhere. It's actually just on its own, just called a web config. Um, if you're not building, if you're building from a template, your view might have a web config. Don't put it in there. Put it in the uh, bottom one, the parent root one. So, and you'll see why here in a couple videos. So, all right. So now we need to want to do something with the users controller. And now that that's all set up, so um, actually I will do that in the next one, but this is how to get your entity framework all set up for an existing database.